Hi everyone. It's Mrs. Drummond again, and this time I'm going to work with you on your very first lesson. Uh, when we're finished, your parents will actually go over it with you too, but they'll use some other materials and um, delve into some questions with you and practice your active contrition and, and talk about some of the things that we talked about today. So you will be using this and you will be using the stickers when you work with your parents with this. And when it's all over, then you'll do the first quiz that you can do online and then just send it directly to me. So it's together in Jesus quiz lesson number one. Okay. There's also, if your parents so choose, in your packets um, that you've picked up, there are uh, videos and things to go through each lesson if you want to jazz it up and music, okay? So today um, we are going to be talking about belonging to a community. Um, and to do that before we begin, I would like us to start with prayer as always, okay? In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Loving God, be with us today as we begin to prepare for our celebrating first reconciliation. Help us to listen to one another and to share. Help us to remember that we are together in Jesus. Please hear these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, today we're going to be talking about um, the greatest commandments that God has given. And God gives us rules. He talks about the Ten Commandments. Um, why do you think he gives us rules? Well, he gives us rules because he wants us to know and to be safe. Um, like, if you were with a friend and they weren't watching crossing the road and it was a busy road, wouldn't you tell them? Why? Well, because you want them to be safe. You don't want them to get hurt. Um, again, if you're with a friend and you're riding bikes and they don't have on a helmet, don't you want them to put a helmet on so that they're safe? They don't get hurt if they, if they crash. Um, so, you know, we have rules because we want to be protected. We want to be safe. We want to um, make sure that those kinds of things happened. So God's greatest rule, though, is to love him with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. And then the second thing is to love your neighbor as yourself. What does that mean? Well, that means to uh, treat others as you would like to be treated. Um, we all know what it's like to be uh, left out. Uh, to have other friends be angry with us, um, for people to say unkind things. I mean, it doesn't make you feel good. Uh, so the next time you get angry and you want to say something like that, or you want to treat somebody mean or um, join in on a group making somebody else feel badly, you, you don't want to do that. You want to start thinking to yourself, how do I feel when that happens to me? You know? So... You have to think about it. I mean, you're old enough now to know what's right and what is wrong. And we all have free choice. We have free will. Um, God gives us that. So uh, we want to think about that. We want to think about the things that, that happen. In our story, in our very first story, there are three boys. Two are very close friends. And one has a cousin that's coming to visit. Okay. The three boys are Matt, Damien, and Nick. Matt and Damien are really good friends, play together all the time. Nick is a cousin who's coming to visit, okay? I don't know if you've ever had that experience before. I have in growing up. We'd have cousins visiting from out of town and you'd have to bring them with you and you know, join in with your friends and that kind of thing. And, and it's hard because they're an outsider. They don't know anybody. They are, are not able to bring all their toys and things to, to work with. So. Um, it makes it difficult, and it's your job to make them feel better. And let's face it, 
when you're just playing with a friend, sometimes it's easier because it's easy to cooperate. But when you start to get lots of people involved, then you got a lot of people you got to cooperate with and somebody wants to be the, you know, the Indian chief and somebody else wants to be the big cheese, you know, and everybody's starting to get angry with each other then and, and fight because they want to do what they want to do and they want everybody to do what they want to do. So uh, sometimes it's harder when we get more people involved in, in that. And that's kind of what this lesson is a little bit about. So we're going to talk about the story at first, the trouble with three friends. My cousin Nick is coming to visit for two weeks, Damien said to his best friend, Matt. Damien was using Matt's road grader. It's a big truck. And he was pushing it around a big figure eight in the, in the sandbox. <clears throat> The sandbox was in Damien's backyard between the two houses of Matt and Damien, who were very good friends. Each friend had built a big castle in the loop of the figure eight. Well, when is your cousin coming? asked Matt. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Matt was hauling rocks up to his castle and he was using Damien's truck. You see, they get along really well. They work together. They're talking and playing and using each other's toys. Well, he's coming on Sunday, said Damien, <clears throat> and I have to take him with us wherever we go. But next week, Damien, you and I, we have um, swimming and day camp. We're, um, and also we're gonna go to the library where we're gonna have those puppet shows that are going on. Well, let's think about it. What's the problem that the boys are having? They already have plans, right? They know what they're gonna be doing next week. And now they have Nick to somehow include. That's the problem, right? Let's see what happens. On Monday, Damien chose <clears throat> his cousin as his swimming buddy at the swimming pool. He stayed in the shallow end of the pool and he swam with him. Maybe I'll learn to swim next week, said Nick to Damien. I learned to float today. So he was all excited and um, Nick, was, uh, Nick was all excited because he was learning how to swim. Damien was hanging with them. They were having fun. Then all of a sudden Matt called from the deep end. And he's like, hey Damien, hey. Well, Damien turned around and he took off and he swam to the deep end to see his friend Matt. They counted one, two, three and they were diving under the water and they raced to the end of the pool to the rope in the middle of the pool and they were playing and having fun. Who's over in the shallow end all by himself? Nick, who knows no one, right? Is that really the way to treat your cousin? Or anyone really, just leaving them there all by themselves? Let's think about the actions that included Nick and how he felt. Yeah, he felt great when, when um, he Damien was with him and they were playing and having fun and Nick was learning how to swim, then he was all by himself. That's when he was feeling left out. Let's think, let's see what happens as we move along in our story. On Tuesday, <clears throat> the boys went to the day camp and the science museum. Three boys climbed on the city bus. Nick found an aisle seat. Matt and Damien found seats across from each other in the row behind him. So let's look. So here they are sitting across from each other talking. And then he's all by himself. See, looking out the window. All by himself. Seriously? Would you do that? Would you leave your cousin who knows no one all by himself while you're hanging around? How would you feel if you were him? I know what we can do when we get home, said Matt, but he said it in a real low voice so Nick couldn't hear. What, said Damien. When he said what, he looked over and he saw Nick turn his head and look out the bus window. Look, he's looking sad. He's all by himself. We can take our dirt bikes and we can ride in that big ditch. Yeah, but that's a two-person thing. And you know, Nick didn't even get an opportunity to bring his bike, so he doesn't even have one. He won't be able to go with us. Matt, Matt shrugged his shoulders and was like, well, kind of like too bad for him. Guess there's not much to do while he's here. How's that making Nick feel, listening to all this? Again, would you like that? 
if you were him? Is that the way to treat someone else? We treat others like we would like to be treated. Let's find out what happens. On Wednesday, the boys saw a puppet stage show that they had set up at the library. What's behind the curtain, said Nick. Nothing, said Damien. We make puppets to put on plays. <clears throat> We're going to do Jack and the Beanstalk, said Matt. We've been planning it all summer long. I'm going to be the big giant. See, he wants to be the big cheese. Fee, fi, fo, fum. And I'm Jack, said Damien. Well, Nick's like, then who can I be? They both kind of looked at each other. Matt looked at Damien. Damien looked at Matt, and they were like, I don't know. There's Jack's mother, I guess, or you could be the goose, or you could be both of them. Again, how's that making Nick feel? Do you think that Matt or Damien would like to be treated that way? Absolutely not. So if you look here, you're going to be talking about these kinds of things with your parents. And there's some options about what you think might happen next. And you put an X, what you think might happen at the end of the story. The first opportunity is that Damien lets Nick play the part of Jack. Well, Damien is his cousin. He should do that. How would that make Jack feel? That would make Jack feel great because Damien's his cousin. He would know that he cares enough to make him feel good and give him the big part. The next opportunity or check mark could be that Matt goes home because Nick is spoiling everything. That would make him feel bad, Lee. Um, because he knows that Matt and Damien are best friends. So again, that's going to make Nick feel badly. The third thing could be that Nick goes home because he doesn't get the big part. Well, I don't think Nick really cares if he gets the big part. He just wants to be a part of something that doesn't feel like he's, you know, causing a, a problem or a wedge between the two best friends. And the last one is the boys decide to put on a three Billy Goats gruff play. That's another good opportunity because all three of them could play and have fun. So that would be a good option, right? Everybody's happy then. So you'll talk more about that with your parents. So the next thing that we're going to talk about is, um, again, we talked about loving God with all our heart, soul, and mind, and to love your neighbor as you love yourself. Well, who is our neighbor? And that's kind of what this is talking about. So we're going to, we're going to read, um, a lesson that God taught us in the Bible. Who is my neighbor? Well, there was a man walking along the road and robbers beat him up. They took his money and they left him for dead. Someone was walking by and he hurried down the road and he saw this injured man and he said, oh, geez, I don't have time to stop. I'm very busy. And he went on his way and he left him there, right there in the road. Another man called by and he saw the injured man and he said, I don't know what to do. And he just went on. He still left him in the road, bleeding with no money. The third man, though, came and he saw the injured man and he stopped and he bandaged him. And he took, them, took him to the nearest place that this person could rest. And he said to the innkeeper, I'm going to pay for this man and for you to take care of him. And if I owe you any more and it costs any more, I will pay you again when I get back. Who shows the love for this injured man? Certainly it was the third man, right? It was the third one who bandaged him and got him to a place of rest and care. Isn't that what you would want somebody to do to help you if you were in trouble? Absolutely. So that's how you love your neighbor. You help them when they're in trouble. You help them when they're in need, if they need something. Now, in this day and age, I want you to know that, I mean, you can't just go help strangers because, you know, there's stranger danger. I mean, it's, it's not safe for that to happen. But if you see someone in need, you can go to an adult and tell them, you know, I saw this 
man or I saw this woman uh, along the side of the road and they'll call the police and they'll get some help for that person. But you never want to do that on your own because uh, it's, it's too dangerous. However, you can look at the playground <laughs> or at your home or your neighborhood with friends and people that you know if they've fallen and gotten hurt or if in the classroom someone needs your help, they can't find the page or they don't understand something or they need um, to borrow a green crayon or, you know, again, with your friends, um, or maybe they forgot their lunch and um, they're hungry. Uh, you can share your lunch. I mean, you know, that way they feel your love. They're also being taken care of. You know, again, that would be something that you would want to have happen if you forgot your lunch or if you couldn't find your page or if you needed a brown crown or a green crown. Again, treat others as you would like to be treated because that's what comes back to you in the end. People treat you like you are like you treat them. If you're mean to them, they all figure out that, you know, that that happens and they'll be mean to you. So you know, if you, if you want a blessed life, then do the best that you can to love God and forgive others and treat them how you want to be treated. If somebody's angry with you, even if you're right, you want to forgive them because uh, I know it's hard, but you got to let it go. You got to let it go, right? We talked about that last time. So, okay. <clears throat> This is what God teaches us. The Bible tells us a story about the first man and woman, Adam and Eve. God commands Adam and Eve not to eat from the tree of knowledge, the tree of good and evil. But they disobeyed God. They did what they wanted. They ate from the tree anyway. We call that original sin because they were the first two, man and woman, so that means original, they're the first and they sinned. A sin is when you do something wrong, you know it's wrong, but you do it anyway. So that's why this is called original sin. They knew it was wrong, but they wanted to do it, so they did it anyway. That story about Adam and Eve tells us about ourselves. We're born with that original sin, which separates us from God. But when we're baptized, it washes away that sin. We're purified. But even though baptism has occurred, God gives us free will. We're able to choose. We know what's right and wrong, and we're able to choose what we want to do anyway. We make free choices. We can obey God, or we can disobey him. We can help others, or we can hurt and harm others. We have to learn good and evil. Jesus teaches us to love God and love our neighbors as ourselves. Sometimes we fail, sometimes we sin, sometimes we're mean and we do unloving things to people. That's why we want to learn how to go to confession or to make our first reconciliation, or it's also called first penance. It's called these three different things because <clears throat> when we reconcile or when we're sorry, we go back with Jesus. We are reconciled with him. When we go to confession or reconciliation, we go and we talk to a priest and we confess or tell our sins to that priest. That's why it's called confession also. And then he gives us a penance. A penance is a prayer or an action that you will say that says you're sorry. For example, once you confess your sin, the priest will absolve you or he'll forgive you through God and he will say, I want you to go back and say three Hail Marys. Or next time when you're upset, I want you to say an Our Father before you lose your temper. And maybe by the time you get to the Our Father, the end of the Our Father, you will have calmed down. He'll give you some kind of an, um, a little talk and some things to help you next time so that you don't constantly make the same mistakes over and over and over again. And sometimes we do. Sometimes that's our thing, that it's hard to um, 
not lose our temper and we're always working on that. But that's why we are able to go and confess ourselves, our sins to the priest. Okay. So again, it's called reconciliation. Come back to God. It's also called confession because we confess or we tell the priest our sins. And it's also called penance. Um, those are three different ways to say the same thing. And penance because the priest gives us something to do or an, uh, an action or prayers that indicate how sorry we are to God. Okay? So um, that's our lesson for today. Uh, you will, again, like I said, talk more with your parents. They'll talk to you about reconciliation, confession, and penance. They will talk to you about sin and knowing what's right and wrong and doing it anyway. That's what a sin is. And our commandments, our greatest commandments, love God with all our heart, soul, and mind. And then treat others as you would like to be treated. And you can talk about things in your own life or in your own families or in your own friendships. Um, with, with your parents, okay? Uh, and use your stickers and take your little quiz and send it off to me and we will mark that on that you've done all of that work with them, okay? So before we leave today, we're going to close with another prayer. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, we are part of a community, Jesus' followers. We gather together in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Jesus asks us to learn to love one another. Unloving actions can hurt. Loving actions can help. It hurts when I'm left out. It hurts when kids ask me to play or don't ask me to play. It hurts when friends get angry and go away, but it helps when friends make up and learn to play together nicely. Look with love on us, God. We are sorry for our unloving actions. We want to be good and loving children. Please hear this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great week, and I will see you again next week for our next lesson. Take care. Goodbye now.